Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Origins Tila, Heroic Warrior Goddess. That is right, my friends. I am continuing on with my look at the very first wave of the Masters of the Universe Origins toy line, new for 20. <laughs> this, of course, is the brand new Masters of the Universe line, now hitting retail stores, which is sort of like a throwback to the original Masters of the Universe toy line. As you can see right there on the yellow blurb on the box, Modern Posing Retro Play. So they're going back to that five and a half inch scale. And as you can see, the packaging also reflects that with that gorgeous retro inspired packaging, something that I really, really love. Uh, in fact, the line is called Masters of the Universe Origins, but the Origins name is absent from the box. We just have that classic Masters of the Universe logo there. And then as you can see, we've got Tila positioned right there in the blister bubble with the uh, mini comic included right behind her. As we rotate this around to the back side of the packaging, the top features some absolutely gorgeous new artwork. I love the artwork on these new card backs. Beautiful stuff. Uh, I love, like, we've got the older King Randor and Marlena in the artwork there, which is much more original toy line mini comic rather than filmation series. That's really interesting. I mean, also Tila's wearing her snake outfit, which was straight from the original toy line. So real cool stuff going on there. Uh, and then the cross sell and everything here is all also some very cool artwork, which is paying homage to the way the cross sells were laid out on the vintage packaging. We even have the action feature call outs, but since these don't really have action features, uh, it really just kind of shows you that you can fit the accessory in her hand and you can, uh, you know, move her articulation <laughs> that's as action feature as we get with these figures um so it's a beautiful beautiful packaging i will say uh that this is one that was kind of subject to the awesome walmart shipping uh, i got this one from walmart.com and uh while i've definitely seen worse i've do got some bent up corners and everything there definitely something to keep an eye out on if you're going to buy these online but these are hitting store shelves right now so hopefully you'll be able to walk into the store and pick out a nicer looking card back especially for those of you that want to keep these in the package because they are really really cool retro card backs but i'm gonna rip this open and we're gonna get a closer look at the tila figure within so before we get to Tila herself, it is worth mentioning that she does come with the same Beast Barrage mini comic. Uh, this is the same one that appears to be packaged with all six figures in Wave 1. So we saw this with He-Man and Skeletor already, so you get it with Tila also. All right, so we've got our Tila outside of the box. And the first thing I want to do is bring in the tape measure so you guys can see that she measures right at the five and a half inch mark. Exactly what we would expect out of these scales perfectly with the vintage Masters of the Universe toy line. Um, but of course, this is our first female figure that we're looking at. And you can see that the overall build is very similar to that of those vintage action figures. In fact, let me go in and bring in He-Man just to kind of stand them side by side. That way you can get a good look at the way that the female figures scale next to the male figures. So Tila does come in the package wearing her snake armor there, which is very cool looking. You can see what it looks like on there. Again, very similar to what we saw on the vintage action figure. And one of the things you're going to notice on these is that they basically follow the design of the vintage toys as far as the paint deco and everything like that goes. And so what I mean by that is you can see that there is a lot of detail worked into the sculpt of the snake harness. You can see the eye and the nose and all the scales. And the same can be said for the swirls and her wrist brace the boots and everything like that but you'll notice that those are all solid colored plastic there's no actual extra paint deco or anything like that on these guys so they are a bit basic but again that is by design on these figures because they are going for a retro toy look with these so that armor is removable. It's similar to how the vintage armor was removable, but it's a little bit different. You can see the clasp is a little bit bigger here. It actually fastens on really good. It's got a really nice peg there. Um, and then you can easily just pull that right off of the figure. Um, the armor itself is a bit pliable. It's a bit softer than say the vintage armor in comparison. That was a bit more rigid, um, but this isn't like overly gummy. It's soft and flexible, but it's perfect for the figure itself as far as like sitting on the figure's body there. 
And so now we've got Tila in an alternate way we can display her uh, without the snake armor on. And honestly, I really like the head on this figure. Uh, the hair is really nice. It almost has a bit of a filmation look to it, the way they've got her bun done up. And you can see there's actually some really nice sculpted details with the hair there. It is all just a really nice, solid reddish color. Um, also interesting, you know, she's got the dark brown boots. She's got the red hair. Uh, if you remember in the vintage toy line, uh, or maybe you didn't notice, but the boots usually match the hair on the vintage toy, and there were versions with lighter red boots and lighter red hair, and some of them had more brown hair and brown boots. So you can see we've got a bit of an amalgamation here and like the designs for Tila, kind of taking some direction from the various toy designs as well as some of her looks in different media. Uh, but all, overall, I really actually like the head sculpt there. I think that is really, really nice. And then the body does mimic the style of the armor that she's wearing uh, in that vintage toy line quite a bit. So let's go ahead and talk about the articulation with this figure. So it is going to be very similar to what we've seen with He-Man and Skeletor, but it's on a new body here. So that head is on a ball joint. It can look left and right. You can see it rolls around there. So a decent range of motion there. You do have the hinge joints there at the shoulders. Uh, so they can go forwards, backwards, up and down. You got swivels at the elbow. You've got bends at the elbow. You got swivels at the wrist and it hinges at the wrist. You can turn the waist, and then the legs have these uh, ball joints there. You can see, so the legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards. They can kind of roll around there. Uh, the knees, you can swivel and you can bend them. I will say that the knees are a bit strange looking, and I've kind of mentioned this in He-Man's review as well. It stands out a lot more on the female figures for some reason. They just kind of got this big lip, basically, like this overhang over the knee where the articulation is. So it looks a little strange. It functions well um, and then you got swivels at the boot cut and then the ankles can move forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side so you actually do have quite a bit of articulation here and it's kind of neat because, like I said, it's a very vintage figure build, but with a lot more articulation. And while some of it looks a little strange, like the knees, it does all function really well. And one thing that I will continue to say about these figures is they feel super solid and sturdy as far as the construction goes. Um, so they pose well. The joints are all nice and tight. I haven't had any loose joints. And, uh, you know, she just feels like a really good solid action figure. And here's something else, and I've talked about this again in my other reviews of He-Man and Skeletor, but we haven't seen it yet with the ladies. These are totally modular, so they do have interchangeable parts. And what I mean by that is you can pop the head off of the ball joint there. You can remove the waist. Look at that. There's like a little peg joint there. You can remove the boots. You can pop those off the pegs. You can pull the arms out of sockets, and you can pull the wrists out of the wrist joints. So really cool stuff that's going to allow for mixing and matching. It's sort of like a hidden feature with these because it doesn't even mention it on the boxes. Um, but it is worth noting that the pegs on the female figures are smaller than the male figures. So, you know, unfortunately, we can't do any like silly stuff like, you know, this. It doesn't really fit. I mean, you can, I guess, but it doesn't really clip together, you know, and like the female uh, upper body the torso doesn't really fit on the male legs uh, the pegs are just different sizes there and the same for the uh, ball joint at the neck you can see that they are different between he-man and Tila. so you know we're not really going to get any mixing and matching between the look how little her head is on the, on the he-man body that's ridiculous so we're not going to get any mixing and matching between the male figures and the female figures which is fine it's not like that's a thing that's really needed I don't think, I guess maybe, I don't know, uh, but it's worth noting and it's something I definitely wanted to mention. So obviously she'll be able to switch parts with Evil Lynn because Evil Lynn is the exact same body as hers, um, so those parts are swappable. Now I do want to mention this because I know this is going to be a question for anybody who was collecting the Masters of the Universe Classics line. Uh, we've noticed so far that the pegs are not the same. The ball sizes are different on the heads between Classics and Origins, and I just want to point out that it is the same with the females. Um, the ball is a little bit larger on the Origins figure, so if we took the Tila head from Classics, uh, it doesn't really fit on there. Like, you probably could. If you wanted to heat it up or do a little bit of work to it, I'm sure it could be done. However, it looks gigantic on that body. 
it doesn't really fit. Um, you know, and then if we took the Origins head and tried to put it on uh, the Classics body, it fits over the ball, it doesn't click on, and obviously that head is way too tiny. So those heads do not mix and match very well. Um, you know, the male heads were actually sized appropriately, but the female heads definitely are not. All right, so aside from the snake armor, Tila does come with two more accessories in the form of the shield and her snake staff ka. Um, so these are very, very similar to the ones from the vintage line, which is no surprise. That's how all of these have been so far. Um, you can see they're just molded in a reddish brown plastic, so there's no painted detail. The shield is a bit different than the vintage one. The vintage one had a clip that clipped on her wrist. This one has a handle, uh, which I didn't really know how I felt about it at first, but I mean, it clips in her hand fine, and she holds on to it okay. So not really a problem there. It's just different. It's different than that clip. I think I prefer the clip on the vintage figure, um, but like I said, this is working fine. And then we've got her snake staff. So she's got two gripping hands, which is really nice. So she could really do the shield or the staff in either hand, but that way we can arm her up. Of course, with the articulation, you can even get some two-handed poses. Um, so definitely, I mean, there are a lot more posing options with this compared to the vintage figure. Uh, and overall, pretty cool with those accessories, even though they are expected. All right, guys. It's comparison time. So, since this is so heavily inspired by the vintage action figure, that's where we're going to start. I've got her standing alongside my vintage Tila figure, just so you can see the similarities between this new figure and that one from the 80s. And then, even though I already had her in here earlier, let's go ahead and put her side by side with the Masters of the Universe Classics version. It really shows you the scale difference, but also the style difference between these two toy lines. You know, the Classics line was geared directly to collectors. It was supposed to have, you know, more details, you know, a lot more paint deco. These are a retro feel toy line that is at retail for a much lower price point. So just very different toy lines, but it's interesting to see them standing side by side. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Origins Tila. So as I was just saying in the comparison time, you know, we're coming off of the Masters of the Universe Classics line. I've been reviewing that toy line for like, what, the past 13 years now. And now we're coming into a very different He-Man toy line. So it's one of those things where I've really found myself trying to get away from that to look at these objectively, because like I said, they, they're very different toy lines and they're done that way on purpose. Masters Classics was essentially a $40 per figure toy line by the end there that were all plussed out with lots of accessories, high details, lots of paint. These are $15 figures at retail that are, are intended to be in the style of the original toy line, just with some added articulation. And you know what? These are really fun. The more I play with these, the more I like them. I always have a few nitpicks with some things, specifically with some of the articulation choices or the way that they look in the overall sculpt. Um, but honestly, I think these are really fun and the interchangeability is neat and they feel nice and solid. So yeah, Tila's actually a really nice figure. I think she is pretty cool. I have to give a very special thanks to my friend, Billy, who also goes by the name Thunder underscore Punch underscore He-Man over on Instagram because he was able to score both Tila and Evil Lynn for me from Walmart's website when they went on sale. So thank you so much, Billy, for making sure that I can nab one of these. Um, the good news is that we have now passed August 1st which was street date for these. So these are starting to trickle into the stores now. People are finding them in Walmart stores. And after 2020, these are gonna open up to all retailers, which means hopefully these will be even easier to find come 2021. I've got my fingers crossed, uh, but these are hitting Walmart stores right now. So happy hunting, my friends. Guys, thank you so very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.